Ich bin As we say together the prayer of preparation, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires are open, and from whom the secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, that we may perfectly love you, and bodily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world, that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to so advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. And we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thoughts and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in years of love. To the Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for the 19th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, for as much as without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.
reading is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 107, reading from verses 1 to 10. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the rebuild of the Lord say so. Those who repent from trouble and gather in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. So wonder in those its ways, finding no way to an inhabited town, hungry and thirsty, the sun fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them find the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. This is the word of our Lord.
second reading is taken from Philippians 4, verses 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is nearby. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayers and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to the Lord. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard you, will guard your hearts, and will remain in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is trust, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about this. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace be with you. This is the word of God.
Jesus Christ according to Mark. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit in eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age. Houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. This is the Gospel of the Lord. to preach at this our first Thanksgiving service. I'm very humbled and thankful indeed. My grandfather, the Reverend Canon M. Bichels, who was indeed a canon of the cathedral, and of course my parents, who were also key members of the cathedral, and I'm very proud. But today is a day of thanking God and a day of celebration. Just going to give you a very short history of how this all became a reality today. Just a few days or weeks after my ordination, almost 10 years ago, I went to a service at Southern Cathedral and I met Mrs. Lovett Mara. And to Lovett, as we all refer to her, said to me, now you don't ordain, 
we get for Fort Cathedral. And I took it, you know, just as a joke, and um, it wasn't anything to, you know, to worry about. But she never stopped. Wherever she gets me, she would always remind me, I'm still in Fort Cathedral. You don't have been there, I'm still in Fort Cathedral. She never stopped. But of course, there were others as well. This is um, for the Richards and Tamika Cole. Wherever the elders of the association met me, they always say, we have to do this. We have to do it. But of course, it never happened until four years ago, when the late team, Emerson Thomas, was visiting. Nikki Tali, our current chairman, said, this is the time to do it. We have to do it. We have to get this thing started. And so we had our first meeting on the 27th of August, 2017, if I'm not mistaken, or 2018. But of course, what's happened? A few of us were there. Dijon McEwen, um, Mrs. Mara, and Mr. Papa, a few of us started it on that day, Janet Palmer and a few others. We have since been meeting in my parish church in Kent. We meet for, for fellowship, for service, and then a meeting and lunch afterwards. But of course, COVID came and everything went again quiet. So this has been long coming, and here we are today. Just want to thank God. Many times in the scriptures, we are supposed to give thanks to God. And that is because thanksgiving is meaningless without God. Thanksgiving is meaningless without God. I am pretty sure we all either as individuals or family have something to, thank, to be thankful for. Gratitude is one of the greatest virtues and it's possible on all planes of life. From the lowest to the highest, from the tiniest to the largest. Probably most people, if asked, what Thanksgiving is, would say that it is a gratitude to God for the blessings of life. Many bad blessings, the good things which they have received and which they prize. We should be thankful for all things. Yet in our text, yet our text points to something higher. We give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his masses enjoy forever. In other words, true thanksgiving is a recognition of the goodness and mercy of God. It is the acknowledgement from the heart that all good and truth are from the Lord. And consequently, all intelligence, wisdom, and happiness. So I ask, what are we thanking the Lord for? Why are we here? Members of St. George's Cathedral UK, there are so many things we can thank the Lord for in our life and around us. The ability to thank the Lord is a sign of the total dependence on Him, particularly for making this day possible. In other words, true thanksgiving is a recognition of the goodness and the mercy of God. It is the acknowledgement from the heart that all good and truth are from the Lord and consequently all intelligence, wisdom and happiness. Scripture also says it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. 
It is a good thing because it makes a difference. It makes people who thank God are different from people who don't show appreciation. Today, on this inaugural day of dedication and thanksgiving, we are ready to step into a new realm of adventure, challenges, and hope. Of adventure, challenges, and hope. As a former teacher, I used to go and discourage my students from using Wiki Wikipedia entirely for research and fact-finding. But that is exactly what I have done in my research and preparation for this address. And that is because of the lack of information of Idea Cathedral around. And so Wikipedia records that the St. George's Cathedral is an historical church, mission, society, Anglican church in Freetown, Sierra Leone. The church was one of the grandest churches in Freetown and had one of the highest attendance ratings for a church. It is now the cathedral church of the Anglican Diocese of Freetown. The building began in 1817 and was completed in 1880." What struck me there is the use of the past tense. Was one of the grandest churches in Sierra Leone. Well, I'm not going to go into that argument now. Let's, let's leave that. Since 1828, therefore, our church, the cathedral, has stood in its present location as the focal point of the Anglican church in Sierra Leone. It has been a beacon of mission and the gospel, education and community provision, of good singing and a constant flow or conveyor belt of musical talents, but most importantly, a religious hub for the entire nation. Today, we want to set off on this new journey here from the shores of the UK, not on our own, but with an intention to be in partnership with our mother church, maintaining and upholding the vision, aims, and objectives set by our forerunners. As the dean succinctly put it in his message, I quote, we want to believe that we all share in the vision of spiritual well-being of members, maximizing the potentials of our youth. Together we can embark on this journey as one big cathedral family and prioritize our aims for a future direction and sustainable development." Unquote. Indeed, members of St. Jerry's Cathedral UK, we have a task ahead, a motive to be in existence, and a strong and solid foundation to build on. We have targets to set long term and short term, and dreams to come true. Three years ago, someone asked me what was the purpose of this new association. I generally had none answer to give. Yes, I had none. But today we have a framework on which to progress. Firstly, we aim to work in concert with the Anglican Church here in the UK. As we speak, we are establishing links and twin arrangements with both cathedrals and churches. We also aim to form partnerships with the Dean, Charter and Congregation in all that we seek to do. We will continue to be in mission and share the Gospel of Christ. Our focus, energy and targets would not be just about us here in the UK, but, most, but must be a part of the life of our Church 
designed to make him have the grandest again. Not grand as just a big and special, spacious edifice with men in morning suits and top hats and gold guards, ladies in most flamboyant hats and outfits, <laughs> or an old male voice choir, which we have again today, singing traditional and classical masterpieces of Handel, Mozart, Mendelssohn. But grand in making our church a place of welcome, where the presence of God is evident, a church relevant to the young and seeking to spiritually resource our leaders of tomorrow. We must seek ways of taking the lead in advocating issues of climate change and environmental damage, of child poverty and inadequate educational standards, not least clergy training and development, mental health and well-being, unemployment, and the lack of opportunities in our motherland. My friends, there is so much we can do and will do, but we cannot do this on our own. We will need to be guided and directed by the grace of God, for where there is the presence of God, all things are possible. We may be one of the last of the UK-based Anglican churches to be founded here in the UK, but I call all the UK-based sister churches, for which some of them are here today, to work together with us to achieve our goals. I am pretty sure that we share similar goals, objectives, and vision. We belong to the same Anglican Diocese of Freedom, and we share the same calling, that of pro propagating the gospel. So let us work together for the betterment of our diocese and one another. Let us join in prayers and finding a common ground on which to walk. And so today, let us give thanks to God, for it is good, it's a good thing to do. My friends, there will be challenges, bumps and mountains to climb. There will be setbacks, yet the Bible says that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So yes, there will be joyous days, and there will be bright and happy days because we live in hope. So let fortitude, courage, resilience guide us. Let patience and perseverance sustain us. And may the Lord grant us peace today and always. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his masses endures forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
story. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Holy people, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the church. Seats for intercessory prayers. That's our invited guests, those who have been selected to say prayers, please come forward. Persecution 
and pray especially for our leaders and all others who strive to bring peace in troubled parts of the world. Let there now be light for all, light for all creation, so that peace and justice will reign supreme the world over. Almighty Father, your will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all. Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. of free time. God, eternal shepherd, you tend your church in many ways and rule us with love. You have chosen your servant, the right to Reverend Thomas Wilson, to be a shepherd of your flock. Give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love. By governing with fidelity those entrusted to his care, May you build your church as a sign of salvation for the world. Prayer for the Dean and Chapter Dear God, we offer our prayers today for the Dean, Canon L. K. Thomas, the Chapter and Congregation of the Cathedral of St. George, Freetown. We pray that God will grant the Dean wisdom, patience and courage to lead his flock. We pray for the challenges and the unknown future. Be his comfort, be his joy, be his strength, and especially help him to live and to defend the ideals of his office. Lord, in your mercy. of creation, its richness and variety, yet through greed and ignorance, we scar your world with plastic waste and throw so much away. Make us more like Jesus, treading gently on our common home, and breathe your spirit on us, that we may care more deeply for your earth. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who mourn. O God, who brought us to birth, and in whose arms we die. In our grief and shock, contain and comfort us. Embrace us with your love. Give us hope in our confusion and grace to let go into new life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious God, surround us and all who, all who mourn this day with your continuing compassion. Do not let grief overwhelm your children or turn them against you. When grief seems never ending, take them one step at a time along the road of death and resurrection. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Lord, in your mercy.
since the inception of this really fun organization, we have sadly lost members. And so we will now remember them in the arts of remembrance. I would therefore call Mrs. Lawrence Mara and Mr. Bob Fallon, who are going to write the new articles. We sing the first hymn of Jerusalem the Golden and the candles will be lit, and then we sing the second verse. And so today we remember Colonel Emerson Thomas, Miss Lewis Ova, Mr. Johannes Fowler, Mrs. Stella Fowler, Mr. Morris Olatunji Terry, son of Mrs. Omeka Cole, and Mr. Kevin Samuel Colonel, nephew of Mrs. Jenna Kamara. And we remember all those amongst us members and well wishes who have lost loved ones over the past couple of years.
their souls and the souls of all the faithfully departed through the masses of God rest in perfect peace.
Thank you. That's the final sound. Number seven on the air is the sound decision. And indeed, they are, yes, I know we have a I know we've had this discussion in the group. Mrs. Richards, particularly, has advocated, why don't you get girls singing? But that's when we get a call for the one girl. That's the third one girl. We don't want to get into it, but we just want to. All of them here have sang in the cathedral, including myself. I was one of them. <laughs> We've sang in the cathedral at some point of uh, growing up or the other. So congratulations, gentlemen, for them. And of course, we have our celebrated assistant organist here, Mr. Lord Fanny. Thank you very much. We shall now have the offertory. We have kindly asked few individuals who have consented to act in the capacity, first of all, of Chief Receiver. So I'd like to call on Mrs. Evelyn McEwen to please come forward. And receivers are Ms. Claude Boltzmann and Mrs. Enrique Wisco. We call to speak organize yourselves on the back. We are going to make a start. So let us now all together join in the prayer of the communion. Almighty God, thank you. in my sermon, we are going to be working in partnership with the Church of England, and um, for that, we have tentative arrangements in place for that to happen in the near future, so that we'll be able to form links and train with other cathedrals and churches so as to foster our aims and objectives. And so for that, through the magical powers of everything, we have found somebody who is in our midst today, and that is not other than the Reverend Canon Janice Price. The Reverend Price, as Evelyn said to me, know the diocese of Freetown more than some of us do, I can assure you. And that is because she has visited quite a number of times, but also she used to work 
let me just read it properly so I don't say the wrong thing. Reverend James Price is assistant curate at St. Andrew and St. Mark Sabaton. Prior to ordination, she was board mission advisor for the Archbishops Council of the Church of England. In this capacity, she had the privilege of visiting Sierra Leone many times. And it is with that link, that knowledge, that contact that we have found a gem. And Reverend Price is going to say just a few words to introduce herself and say maybe a little or two how we could form those links. Reverend Price. Thank you, Reverend Simon. My goodness, it's wonderful to have memories of Freetown in my mind as we've been going through this service today. And not least, the wonderful choral tradition of Freetown. Uh, thank you. Yes, let's clap. And enjoying one of your visits to the Freetown, the Diocese of Freetown and the Diocese of Bow, um, I went, I've always gone to the cathedral. And uh, it's been a great pleasure and a great, lovely thing to be there and to have those memories. And I never thought that God would bring me to this point where I could say thank you to you from the motherland of Sierra Leone for the way that being part of your country and visiting your country has changed me. Because it has. And you have brought me love and hope and peace and joy in overwhelming measure. And so I want to say to you, thank you. I want to say thank you to Sierra Leone. And I want to say thank you to the diocese, to the church, the Anglican church in Sierra Leone, because you've given me so much. It's been um, such a privilege. And I first went to Sierra Leone when the two reasons in mind were the link with the Chichester Diocese. And before that, I didn't know much about your motherland at all. And we went to Freetown, and we had the most incredible, incredible time. And one of the key things that I've always prayed ever since is those links would be deepening in prayer. Because the greatest thing that we can give each other, from whatever background, from wherever we come from, is prayer. What a gift that is. It doesn't cost anything. But I think it's the greatest gift that we can bring each other before the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to intercede for us before the Father and in the name and the power of the Spirit. And so I pray that this relationship will be one of deepening prayer. I also pray that this will be a relationship of deepening personal contact. Now I don't need to say to you about personal contact with Freetown. You have that among the diocese. You have that in abundance. But let our relationships deepen in Christ and for the service of Christ. And thirdly, I pray that those relationships will deepen into practical support where we can support each other. And it's not just one way, it's both ways. It's from this country to Sierra Leone and back again. Because we need to receive from each other, to give thanks for each other, in mutual support before our Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to worship Him here. So thank you, distinguished committee, Reverend Simon, Reverend Ethelon, for inviting me to say these few words. Thank you, and may God bless us in abundance. Amen. Thank you very much. I was amazed at the word of us, and that's what I'm saying for you.
we're going to call in somebody very special, um, our Secretary General. Um, tonight's show came in when somebody stood down, and she's been nothing, nothing but excellent, professional, and such a gift to this organization. Then we a few years, well, some gone out, um, she came over, uh, well, she took over the reins of the fellowship secretary, this is what I knew, because I was the fellowship secretary as well, but she has kept her own, and she's been just a joy to work with Mrs. Samosha and Mrs. our secretary. Church. Um, on behalf of the executive and members of the St. George's Cathedral UK branch, I extend a very um, hearty thanks to all of you who have been able to attain our inaugural Thanksgiving service. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation to the foreign people. Reverend Jim Perry, the vicar of this beautiful church, for allowing us to use this facility for our service. The Dean, Canon and Karen Thomas, and members of the Cathedral Chapter in Sierra Leone for their support. Reverend Canon Janice Price, our UK Link, for our attendance and contribution here today. We have dignitaries who have served us in various capacities today, and as we say, charity begins at home. We are happy to have Mr. Cornelius Davis as our distinguished Grand Chief Patron, Mr. and Mrs. Desmond and White as Chief Patrons, Reverend Cindy Charles, a preacher for guiding us through the service, and for the sermon. I hope we have fed and grown closer to the Lord. Also in our midst is newly ordained priest, um, Reverend Ethelin Roy Johnson, who has been one of our facil facilitators, and Mr. Babatunde Johnson, who is working behind the scenes to ensure that this service is live on YouTube. Not forgetting the choir and the lead, Mr. David Charles. I've lost count of how many organists we've had here this afternoon. So all I'm going to say is we do have a bunch of talented people here. And I do say a very big thank you to all the organists who have um, been at the organ today. All these, people's mention, all these people mentioned are members of St. George's Cathedral. We also extend our thanks to Mrs. Evan McEwen, our Grand Chief Receiver, Ms. Claudia Boltman, and Mrs. Amika Lee Skoll, our receivers, representatives from the UK-based um, church organizations, namely Trinitarians, Christchurch, Philippians, Bostonians, and West African Methodist Church, Fast to members of St. George's Cathedral UK branch. I say thank you for all your hard work, cooperation and commitment you have shown in making this day a success. May our loving Father be with you and bless you always. Please stay behind after the service for refreshments. Please stay in the church and you'll be ushered in the hall when we're ready for you guys. Please do not leave without having a bite to eat or our something to drink. Thank you all. I hope you've had a blessed afternoon. Be blessed as we discuss from here. And may the Lord of and may the Lord of God be with you all. Amen and thank you. Um, I think I've got one announcement to make. Can I please ask members of the St. George's Cathedral UK branch to assemble at the back of the, of the church for a quick um, photograph? Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Cecilia. And I want to welcome members of the Cathedral UK 
campaign to extend uh, the foreign forest to all the work that's in the army. And I'm sure that you're going to want to go. Nothing else is so much as I'm going to share to do. No matter what time, she will be able to write to her text, her email, or whatever it is. Thank you very much. Sorry? Okay, right. We have your name. Why did I know that this would take up so much and so well? Honestly, that's why we thought we should just have a modest occasion. And so we thought we'd come to this church just big enough. But sadly, the pool is rather very small. So, as some um, Thomasha said, you will be ushered into the pool, but some of you will be definitely be having your refreshments at the back of the church. Don't worry, everybody will be definitely refreshed, and we will all have fellowship, and um, please stay, because we have lots of you to partake of. Thank you very much. Right. So we think of how we will sing the best for you. Sing the best part of which, after which I'll give the blessing. <laughs> of the peace in God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of His Son Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all those whom you love now and always. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to serve the Lord.